Okay, so it's 6 o'clock, roughly, Saturday morning. Only a couple things would get me up this early on a Saturday morning. And this is one of them, and it's going to be a long journey because we're going through four different states. It's going to consume our whole day. But uh, I'll let the next clip show you uh, what it's all about. Wish me luck. Okay, so, all right, so I still, I still don't have my. I have um, I, I found my camera. I just have to find the charger cable for it. But so I'm using my phone for now. But um, so yesterday we went on a little trip. Uh, we left Wisconsin, went through Illinois, Indiana, into Michigan to pick up this my new ride. Yes, still have the old one because I got this one for less than $400. Uh, it's been in storage for 10 years, so can't start it up and run it for you. Uh, I did hook up the power just to see, just to make sure there's juice everywhere. Uh, you should have seen, this thing looked horrible by the time we got back. Out of nowhere, a winter storm hit, and we hadn't planned on it because there wasn't, they weren't calling for any, and it was, it was a very long day yesterday, let's say that. <laughs> um, but we made it back. Uh, here's a quick picture of what this looked like after the trip. So, what I've done so far is just hook up the battery, check the lights come on, the turn signals work, all that works. Uh, I bumped the starter, the motor turned, but I don't want to bump it again and I got to take the plugs off and I got to remove that fairing to do it. I do have the side covers, they're in the house, I cleaned them up, I just wanted to see how they turn out. They look pretty good, they look pretty good. Okay, so still cleaning, I don't have any wax, so I used uh, some uh, rubbing compound, polishing compound and scratch remover. I think it came out pretty good. Here's one that hasn't been done yet. You can kind of see. See how the lights don't really, they're kind of fuzzy. But if you look here, you can see the, almost see the fixture completely. So it's coming out pretty good. Uh, it's got some nice pinstriping on it. Can't really see it very well, but uh, the fairing, somebody scribed in here, you can kind of see it. They scribed in here an eagle and it says Goldwing 83. This is an 83 GL 1100. I am sort of on the fence as to whether to take off the fairing. I might actually keep it, I haven't decided yet. I wanted a naked GL, but I kind of like the idea of having that to buffer. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, for sure it's coming off to clean everything up and to check everything. So it's gotta come off, but whether or not I put it back on, I don't know. These bags have got to go. Uh, as much as I like having them on there, it's like a throwback from the 80s, you know, the triangular shape and the four round headlights. They just don't go with the bike anymore, you know? So. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do that. It's gonna need a new seat cover. There's a little rip here. Needs a new battery. Obviously that one's been in storage for a very long time. Uh, don't know how long. The guy said eight to ten years, but he wasn't the owner, so I don't really know. Uh, the, the, the whole dash part is a, a good working order. Um, I think, yeah, see the lights come on, the gauges move. Um, I don't know, does the stereo work? Let's... Not that I would keep this. I'd, I, I had this open. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there's some. Yes. I can hear the speakers, static in the speakers, so it's on. There we go. See, I can't... Or this person has poor self control. There we go. But if things are more subtle than that, they have so, a lot of self control in some areas. Apparently, it works. In uh, so, if I keep the fairing, new radio, new speakers. These 
probably the originals. Water, they're waterproof, but they're, they're probably the original speakers, and I could get new ones easy enough. <laughs> but again, I'm not sure. My buddy has a gold wing. The one that helped me pick this up, he has a gold wing. It's naked. It looks great. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see. The carbs have to come off and go on through. Uh, these are very finicky carbs, and I don't want to mess with them. So I'm sending them over to Godfrey's Garage. He's going to take care of them. Uh, I don't have the money because to rebuild these carbs usually cost them. He usually charges like $500 to $1,000, depending on how bad they are. Uh, but he needs computer work. I can do that, so we're going to barter a little bit on that. Uh, I'm going to take the cover off, check the timing. It has 86,000 miles on it. That's a lot, but these things can usually get about 250 to 200 to 250. I've, I know one uh, buddy of mine uh, that I used to work with. He has one. He still has it. Still rides it. It's got 300. It's just about to turn 300,000 miles. He figures by next summer it will. So. Overall, it's in really good shape. The exhaust is solid. There's no rust through spots. The frame is in good shape. There's no oil leaks anywhere. Whoever had this took really good care of it, seems like. So I have no doubt it will go many more miles. These handle grips have to go. They're the spongy ones, and they're hard as a rock because they've been, you know, been used to death. Uh, I checked the oil in the for the brakes. It's a light brown. So it's not bad. There's no junk in here. It's, it hasn't solidified. But the fact that it's a light brown tells me there's moisture in there, so we want to get that out. Uh, there's nothing in the rear reservoir. That's a concern because that means it's leaking somewhere probably. So I'll have to address that. Um, the fuel tank, we looked in there as soon as we got home last night. Pretty clean, I have to admit. Pretty clean. So uh, I'm going to throw some sea foam in there, let it sit for a few days, empty it out. Rinse it out with some used gas that I've got, and then we'll just see if that comes back. It should. It really should. Um, there's a couple of hoses off. Uh, that's the spark plugs. Uh, like, where is it here? But the, as far as I can tell, the hoses that are off are crankcase ventilation hoses, and they probably just worked loose. So um, I, all the hoses are there. I just got to reconnect them. Uh, what else? Oh, I'm going to take the spark plugs off, which is what I started doing here. I'm going to take the spark plugs off and squirt some oil in there and just kind of slowly work the cylinder, see if I can get it to complete a revolution. Um, I don't want to hit the starter now because I don't know what's in the heads. shouldn't be anything because it's been sealed up pretty good, but you just you never know, right? So uh, It's got air shocks front and back, so I'll have to check the air pressure in those. But like I said, the uh, backrest and the side saddles are coming off. I, they're just, they're 280s for me. The ones, uh, the original ones that came with the uh, 83 Interstate and Aspen Kate have a much better design. They're more modern looking. They're a little thinner. Um, it just looks nicer. So if I, I want saddlebags for sure, So, but these are going to go. I did have one offer of $300 for the fairing and the side saddles in the back. Uh, that would actually almost pay for the bike. <laughs> but uh, instead, I think what I'll do, see what I can get for just those three and hang on to this until I decide for sure and then use that money for new saddlebags. I might just put the two saddlebags. I think my wife would like the backrest, so maybe I'll get one of the newer back ones for there. I'm not sure. I, I'm still going over a lot in my head on what I want to do here. Um, but, yeah, that's the new... It has taken up a huge amount of room in the garage, unfortunately. So, I either have to not park my car in here, or I'm going to have to find a way to rearrange things so I can get both bikes and the mower, the tiller, all that stuff in here. It's amazing. I got a two and a half car garage and I can't fit the stuff I had in my one and a half car garage in here. And it occurred to me, I don't have a, a shed. At the other house, I had a shed. So things I weren't using in the winter would go in the shed. Things I weren't using in the summer would go in the shed. So, and without that, everything's in here. So it's a, it's a mess, it's a mess. <laughs> uh, but I do have the what I need to complete my workbench. I'm gonna just do an eight foot workbench for now. And I got another eight feet I can go if I need to. Um, and I'll just make it the same width and height as that. And uh, I think it'll work out pretty well. 
Um, as far as this goes, I, you know, one of the biggest problems with these bikes is this, the uh, alternator. And unfortunately, if the alternator is bad, you have to pull the engine, and that isn't easy. So, I'm hoping it still charges. What makes them go bad usually is the uh, uh, guys with these um, gold wings tend to accessorize them to the nines, putting all sorts of lights and stuff on them, and overtaxing that. This does not seem to be the case. He has these additional lights and the tail lights on that thing. That's it. So it might be okay. Oh, and the radio, but that might not be enough to tax it. The other thing is the original plug. That's usually gets corroded and shorts out the alternator. Now I looked, it looks clean, so I might be okay there. If the alternator is good, I'm going to remove that plug and just solder them together. Because the only reason you need a plug there is to pull the motor, and the only reason you need to pull the motor pull the motor is if the alternator goes out. And if by leaving that plug, it causes the alternator to go out. I mean, you're just kind of inviting it, right? So we'll see how it goes. I got to get it started first and see if it's putting out a charge. Need a new battery for that. Um, I haven't looked at the plugs yet, but. Like I said, this thing, this thing seemed to be stored. They, they put some thought into the storage, so I'm hoping it'll be okay. But to get the plugs off, I have to take this lower fairing off, which just a few screws there, but, you know, I don't know. Anyway, like I said, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, but this was, uh, this was the reason I got up so dang early yesterday and put up with so much, so much junk. But... It's, like I said, it's in pretty good shape. I think we'll be okay. The, the two things that worry me are the motor, make sure it's not seized, and the alternator, make sure it charges. Everything else seems to check out fine. Oh, we, I did look at the back brake disc. Yeah, it needs to be replaced <laughs> really badly. But uh, there's some thought that when you press the either bra the foot brake or the hand brake, it applies brakes to both the front and the back at the same time. So if that's the case, um, bleeding the brakes will be a little bit of a challenge, but uh, I do have a manual for the Heinz manual for this that came with it, so I think I'll be okay. So um, anyway, um, but if I do, if I do replace this wind jammer uh, and go naked, I'm gonna need a light bucket and a headlight, so. Uh, I might go a newer one with LEDs, less draw on the alternator. I'm for sure going to put an LED brake uh, rear tail light, and um, I might even put LED turn signals in, but that means I have to replace the flasher relay with a digital one. But that might not be too bad. Um, and I, these lights don't look very bright. So I'm guessing these two driving lamps. So they, they probably didn't cause much of a draw on the alternator. So fingers crossed that alternator is in good shape. But um, if I'm going to get anything done today, i got to get going because uh, it's getting late. and i got stuff to do. Oh, and I did start that up the other day. Fired right up my 550. Fired right up. I wanted to go for a ride so bad. But, you know, you know road salt and cold weather, just not a good idea. So...